sorry about that. Hi everybody, I'm Barbara Smith. A lot of people call me Barb. I hope everybody's doing well this morning. I had an opportunity to uh, stretch your legs a little bit before we get back into it. Um, my specialty is in social media marketing. I work a lot with small businesses and help them understand how to leverage the power of social media. It is an incredible tool, um, especially when it comes to branding and uh, brand recognition, getting traffic over to your website, and all kinds of other things. How many people here are using social media today? All right. And do you use it on your phones, or do you use it from your computers? How do you access it? All over the place. All over the place. All, all right. Facebook, LinkedIn, yeah. Twitter, everywhere. Which is your favorite? Uh, I'm big on Facebook, but I've gotten to like LinkedIn a lot yes. for professional networking between other fellow club presidents. You know. And a lot of the social media use that you're doing, is it um, for business or is it a lot of pleasure? Business? Business. Anybody Bus yeah. using social media for business? Maybe. Mostly for Mixed. Mixed. Okay. Go ahead. Can you give us an email contact? Right away, so sure, absolutely. Social atlas at gmail.com. Or do you consider LinkedIn social media? Absolutely. It's a gigantic social media channel. They've um they've really improved a lot of the functionality of the channel so that it can become uh, just a, an Im amazing tool for networking and, and increasing your uh, your reach and getting a lot of great information out there as well. Um, if you start following like some of the uh, the thought leaders on LinkedIn, you can actually get a, an, an amazing amount of information that way. And that's part of what's going on with the internet is that we need to find a way to sort of understand the deluge of information that's out there and that's one of the things we're going to talk about today which are hashtags and that helps you find uh, the information anyway I'm here to talk to you about five little big things that you can do and make uh, changes in the way that you're actually doing social media uh, today in order to help you get more business so here's an overview of what we're going to talk about today first of all we're here to help not sell the art of non-interrupted selling. And uh, by that we mean that we're going to be where the people are so that uh, when they actually arrive at these channels, we're available to give them these answers as a brand. Second part uh, that we're gonna talk about is that it's all about the branding, baby. We have to be the hostess or the host with the mostess so that people actually want to come to our channels and make sure that when they get there, they're getting the information that they're looking for. As I mentioned a minute ago, we're going to talk about hashtags. How many people here have heard about hashtags? Everybody know the, does everybody understand what they are? No. Okay, we're going to get into that and I'm going to answer that question for you. Uh, the fourth thing that we're going to talk about today is about content curation. That is definitely a do today. Um, as a brand, the way to get out into um, in front of people is actually to produce or curate really good information so that people can t get their answers and continue to come back over to your website. And the fifth thing that we're going to talk about is that we have to make and nurture connections in order to stay in mind an in insight and on mind. Used to be a different way to say that, right? So, obviously, small changes can make a big difference. If we start to utilize social media um, a little bit differently than we normally would, we actually can start to break down the barriers. And instead of a, uh, a customer not actually being able, being able to, uh, to access us, they're going to be able to get the answers that they want and with these new rules start a two-way conversation instead of a one-way conversation and in that way actually have more people who are using uh, who are potentially going to use your business so let's go over some of these rules how they used to be and what they are now in terms of social media as I mentioned a minute ago, it's definitely a one-way conversation instead of a two, and now it's a two-way conversation. Uh, it used to be all about selling. Now it's about helping. It used to be all about promoting, and that was the only thing that you were doing. 
Now it's actually about informing and educating. I mentioned a minute ago that that was content marketing. And that is uh, a big way to get a lot of business coming your way. Used to be about competing. Now it's actually about collaborating. You're on the internet and you're um, on Facebook or you're on LinkedIn. You're actually going to be able to connect with people who technically are your competition. Maybe not locally, but they um, have other uh, good information to share and you can actually ride each other's waves, if that makes sense. Um, it used to be about shoving the product down somebody's throat. Hate to say it like that, but it really was. You know, that it's uh, if you think about the old school mentality. Now it's really about being able to provide the answers um, during the sales cycle, so that when that customer is ready to make the decision, that they're making a more informed decision. Um, does anybody know about how many times it takes somebody to be presented with your brand, product, or service before they actually start to buy? That's a big number, a little lower. It's actually seven. It doesn't sound as big as it is, but it used to be a lot different. And now the uh, goal, and we're going to run into the next part. Uh, sorry, that I don't have a clicker. Um, anyway, as I was saying originally, um, the, the goal now is to help and not to sell. You're going to position yourself as an authority and a resource on your topic. Why? Because visibility is credibility. The more you're out there, the more people will recognize you. To help you put all this into action, thank you, um, we're going to do a few things. Uh, basically, to present yourself as a resource, you're going to need to uh, get content out there. You're going to grow your, con uh, your network. You're going to connect actively, like with Sam's 5,000 connections. <laughs> you're uh, going to go out there and you're going to seek out industry experts. We're going to talk a little bit more about hashtags soon, I promise, but we want to talk about using hashtags um, to, in searches in order to help find where the conversation is or find people who are actually talking about what your topic is so that you can connect. Again, it's about collaborating, not competing anymore. Um, you can present yourself. Oops, excuse me, sorry. You can uh, basically set yourself up as a resource and as an authority by setting up a SlideShare library up. Anybody here use SlideShare before? SlideShare. SlideShare is an incredible um, product. It is free. Uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name who was speaking earlier, but free is always a good thing. <laughs> there are a lot of free products out there. But SlideShare is essentially what you would call a content depository, and that is a virtual library that you're actually uh, creating for either your customers or for um, people with like-minded interests. So you can actually get them uh, involved in your library and have it filled with resources, not just products that or content that you've produced, but content that uh, other people have produced who are authorities on the actual subject. Moving that all into one library that you own or that is embedded onto your website is, again, positioning you as an authority and a resource on that topic. You're going to want to share links to interesting and relevant articles. Who here uses LinkedIn? We said a number of people. Have you actually shared any articles on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. And you go through, how much uh, interaction do you get from that? Do you see a lot of uh, good benefit from it? <coughs> actually. Yeah. yeah. It's very powerful. Um, a lot of, and I bet you've actually grown your following because you're sharing good and relevant information. That's a, get a great example of how that works. Um, essentially, being able to have the answer for people. And social media allows you to have that answer because you're out there in front of so many more people than you would normally be. Um, you could also write an opinion about an article and post that. And again, post it onto any of your different social networks. You gather a following on each of the networks, and then essentially you're positioning yourself as an authority and a resource because people want to be around people who have. Uh, go ahead. Curate is a, is a new use of that word. Well, how do you define that? What do you do? Content curation is a big uh, 
great keyword this year. Um, content curation essentially is going out to the internet and curating um, all of the article uh, posts, the blogs, all of the places where you would find content and curating it uh, and then re-, re uh, could, you, could you use a different word than curating? Oh, what sure. are, you, you, are you rewriting it? You're not plagiarizing No, you're, it? You're, you're not actually. There's a difference. You can either be a content producer or you can be a content curator. And what that means in today's um, use of the word is that you're reusing somebody else's information and basically giving them an attribution, so you're giving them credit that you're utilizing their information, but then you're resharing it to your network. Okay. Does that answer the question? Plagiarizing? Oh no, it's not plagiarizing. <laughs> it's you're saying. Uh, yeah, well, sure, it's the reverse. Yeah, that, that'll work. You're collecting, yeah. you're collecting, you're collecting and uh, redistributing it, giving credit. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the most important things is to make sure that you're attributing your sources properly. Do you have to get a, Do you have to get an okay to distribute it? No, actually, I'm going to show you how to do that really easily. Um, once you're connected with somebody, you can use a mention on social media. So you put that at symbol in front of a name, and actually, it will create its own link and attribution that way. Go ahead. Is that like creating a bibliography in a book? Yeah, kind of. Um, and basically, as we were talking about the SlideShare library, you're gathering all of these, um, I'll go on the internet once we go through the presentation, but you're gathering a lot of resources from all kinds of different um, entities, and you're attributing them to who the proper person was that actually produced it in the first place. But what you want is to have people come to your library. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to send you to... Michael's library or Barry's library, I want you to come to my library because I have you then in my network and basically can get um, you over to my website or you know anything like that. Or again, be possible to have those seven times that somebody comes into my into contact with my stuff so that we can get it done. Go ahead. Yeah. It is it basically the same as Wikipedia except you're drawing people in uh, from Wikipedia into your own your own uh, source of information? Um, so let's take an example. Um, let's say I was on uh, a website and there was a downloadable one pager that had really, really helpful information about avoiding identity theft. Um, I would download that onto my computer, go onto SlideShare, which is a content depository, and upload it there and I would attribute it to the um, source where I actually found that. So I would go onto that website and actually attribute it to that. that okay. So it's not quite Wikipedia. These are actual resources, meaning things that are downloadable that somebody can reuse, and they're meant to be reused. It's all, it's all about sharing information. I hope that answers your question. Go ahead. I think the difference between what Ron's talking about with Wikipedia is Wikipedia you're like having to reinvent the wheel. What you're doing is you're doing... Yeah, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. You're I want to do as little there. work as possible. <laughs> Once they find out the topic that you've got, yeah. you put it all in one place. Exactly, exactly. And so what I advise my clients is that you can make a decision to become a content curator or a content producer. You're Because the word or the, the topic this year is produce content, content marketing. It's all about getting the information out there so that you have that. Um, and if somebody else has already written a great tip sheet about, you know, whatever the topic is, why do I spend the time to go do that? I'm going to ride their wave and basically, you know, uh, re-share it, attributing it to the right person. But I also look like an authority because I'm using somebody else's authoritative piece. Can you do both? Yeah, you can absolutely do both. That's a really good question. And you want to try and do that. The, the reality is my clients in general are small businesses, one man show, two man show. They don't have the time, the resources, the funding, you know, all of that in order to spend the time to produce that content. So if there's already great content out there, it's not, it's sort of a no-brainer. You can add your twist to something else that's out there, you know, there are a lot of different ways to do it, but that's a really good question. In print, I believe you can be sued for plagiarism. 
But if you do basically the same thing on the internet, can you also be sued? Um, yes, and that's why I'm I'm really really trying to hone the point or drive the point that you must attribute. You must attribute. Wait a minute. If you steal from one person, it's pl plagiarism. More than one, it's research. <laughs> I'm going to write that one down. Um, yeah, no, but it, it's not actually, so these things that you're resharing, re um, they're usually PDFs. So it's not really that you're copying and pasting the content and saying, I wrote this. It's like you're bringing it, uh, it's like you're adding more pictures into a library and, and giving the attribution to somebody else. Does that maybe make a little more sense? Go ahead. Um, that's a really good question as well. So the way that I would do that is I would go to that website and basically create a PDF of the website. And so that way it's attributed both ways. Does that make sense? And in the actual comments, you can put um, both the name of the news or the, both of the names, the author and, and the, uh, the website, or excuse me, yeah. Okay, what about using an RSS syndication plugin on a WordPress site mm -hmm. where it's all attributed? Is that good for SEO or bad? Um, well, the RSS feed is really so that, again, we were talking about the deluge of information that's on the in internet. The RSS feed is really so that I, as an individual, can start to wade through all that information and really just listen to what I want to listen to. Mm -hmm. So for SEO purposes, eh, not really, yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll think about that for a second, but no, I, I wouldn't really think about it like that in terms of SEO. Go ahead. When, when we have newsletters in the organizations, we generally go out to a variety of sources and we publish them in our newsletters. So you simply put at the bottom of the article, mm -hmm. reprinted by permission. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the same concept. That's exactly the same concept. It's just the tools are a little different. So when we're talking about social media channels, the attribution becomes what's called a mention, and it becomes really easy in order to do it that way. It's not, not complicated at all. Go ahead. Am I correct that the usual procedure, if a source says that some content was plagiarized, they will send you cease and desist. They would just start with a lawsuit. Am I correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, for instance, if you use a Getty image, uh, that, a royalty-free image that you haven't actually paid for, you'll receive a letter from uh, them and so on and so forth. But I'm not suggesting that anybody go out to websites, copy and paste co you know, content that's there, and then try and pass it off as your own, or even just do it that way. There's a procedure for it. We can get really more into it, you know, maybe on a different day. But let's talk about um, the rest of this stuff so that we can get through it, and then we can get some more questions at the end. Um, anyway, let's see. So when you're out and about on the Internet, make sure that you're logged into some of your social profiles. We're, again, talking about becoming an authority and a resource. Um, so if you're out and about on the internet and you're actually logged into your Facebook profile or your LinkedIn profile and you find an article that's very relevant or very interesting uh, about the topic that you're talking about, you can actually go down to the bottom of that article and where it says comments, um, basically add your opinion to it. Why do you want to do that? Because you're going to be seen and other people when uh, they see you all around the internet continue to think of you as an authority and a resource. Um, another way to make sure that you're viewed as an authority and a resource is to make sure that you're sending out a monthly newsletter. Does anybody here uh, receive newsletters from authoritative people out there? Right? Yeah. You subscribe. That's exactly the same concept. You want to make it available for other people to subscribe. Um, going back to Barbara's question here about um, whether you can curate or produce, this is a great uh, opportunity to actually gather all of the things that you found on the internet of other people's sources and reshare it basically in a newsletter. So you're, you're just giving a, a good um, summary. 
So I talk a lot about being where they are when they're there. Um, one of the things that you'll find people talking about nowadays is called a social media platform. Why do you call it a platform? Because um, essentially it allows you to use your website as the foundation, and from that foundation, you actually can connect all of your social pro profiles for your brand and make sure that people can get in to your network and instead of them just walking out from your website, they have an opportunity to continue on to your Facebook page, your Google Plus profile, your LinkedIn, and instead of just having a one-time visit, continue to come back and um, essentially get the information in the way that they want to. You'll find that each social profile has a little bit, or each social channel has a little bit of a different um, type of person. Um, people on LinkedIn are there generally for business. People on Facebook are there because they want to have a little bit of fun. Um, so the way that you're talking on each of these profiles is going to change. And if you can get that kind of uh, minute difference down, you're really going to find a lot of power there. But basically, you're going to um, go out there, find your audience, make sure that you have the resources available to actually work these channels, kind of what we were talking about a minute ago, um, making sure that you're not uh, producing content if you don't have the resources, but making sure you understand how much time it's going to take to work these channels, and then going out there and branding these channels to create this social media platform for your business. So we talk about branding. So when you walk into Starbucks, do you know you're in Starbucks? Yeah. Does it matter if it's here in Boca or in Poughkeepsie or somewhere in California? It is exactly the same. That's the same concept that you want to talk about when you're thinking about branding your social media channels. We want to make sure that if somebody arrives at these channels, the graphics, the colors, as much as you can customize is customized. When you're talking about optimization and branding um, of these channels, one of the first things that most people miss is filling out these profiles completely. It's a real no-brainer. It takes um, time to do it, and obviously if you do it right, it's going to help you be found a lot more. You want to make sure that these profiles have links to your site and are leveraging any of your relevant uh, keywords. Does everybody know what keywords are? Yeah? Are you using them? Sort of. Um, well, the keywords are the way that people actually are going to get over to your site and find you. And that um, is another way of saying hashtags. Just FYI. All right. So once we added the branded graphics to your uh, channels, we want to make sure, um, one note that a lot of people don't take the time to do is actually use a uh, relevant file name. And this is for SEO purposes. Um, why do you want to do that? Because the back end, the, um, they actually, for SEO, look at the alt tags and uh, the file name is actually part of it. Is that search engine optimization? Yes, search engine optimization, exactly. Um, another way to make sure that the branding is, uh, is updated is to use these graphics by season or promotion. So if it's Valentine's Day and you have a promotion coming, make sure that your channels are looking uh, like your brand, but go ahead and integrate Valentine's Day in there. Um, if you have a promotion going, make sure that these uh, graphics are updated. They're not hard to make. If you're working with um, a graphic designer, you can usually get something like that created for your different channels without very much expense, but it's worth it. These channels need to look good. This is your house, essentially. You're inviting people up to your house on the internet, if you think about it like that. Um, make sure that your channels have any um, relevant applications. So on Facebook, your Facebook page, can actually have applications installed on it. So for instance, you can let people get into your website right from your Facebook page. It's an application that's easy to install. If you have SlideShare, what we were talking about earlier, you can add an application to SlideShare. So your Facebook page essentially becomes a dashboard for people to get 
further into your network. So again, you're basically just creating that, that avenue for people to drive into your network, onto your highway, and get off you know, whenever they want to around um, your different channels. Make sure that you're keeping up with the changes that happen to the channels. Um, for example, Facebook cover image. Um, it used to be that you couldn't actually use uh, much text. Now they've changed it and you can actually include up to 20% text. That means that you can do a little bit of marketing there. So take advantage. Um, that's a lot of, um, a lot of the time I see that people don't do anything with this graphic and it's just all this marketing real estate. <laughs> You know, and people can uh, really take advantage of that. All right. So we talk about being the hostess or the host with the mostest. We're wanting to get people to come to our social channels. And how do we do that? We want to make sure that people understand that it's, um, it's a place where they can actually get answers. They're uh, inspired. They're getting all the information. Um, so we're talking about... Just basic human stuff. Be genuine, be relevant, be polite, be considerate. People can, uh, for some reason, think that social media sometimes is a good place to have a, a rant. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Just uh, don't, don't write anything down that you don't want to come back to you, so keep, in, keep those kinds of things in mind. Um, make sure that you are getting your audience involved. You're asking relevant questions. You're asking questions uh, that get them to uh, find you know, the points that they're, they're losing their information or that they, they need a, a little bit of connecting the dots. So you're actually the host and making sure that that's happening. All right, so we talked about hashtags, um, just so that we understand what hashtags are. And as an FYI, I used this particular hashtag because it's basically about connecting our conversations to the internet. Um, and if you look at this uh, right here, basically a hashtag is essentially linking a social media post to a group um, of others about the same topic. So once you start using that hashtag, everybody else who's talking about that one topic will be able to find your post. Not saying that that's going to bring it up to the top of the chain, but the point being that you're going to have a lot more SEO power behind um, con con uh, combining those two efforts. Um, Can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, if you're on Facebook itself, mm -hmm. can you use a hashtag right on it? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how to use them um, on the different channels. Uh, Twitter was the first place that hashtags became popular or, or something where they used them. Um, however, all of the uh, networks actually support them now. Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, I mean there's not one that doesn't do it. Google Plus does it really well and I'm going to show you that in just a second. Go ahead. Yeah. Question? Are hashtags unique like the email addresses and websites? They can be. Um, they can, for instance, here, let me show you a couple. So, this is a unique hashtag. Love my DQ. Anybody go to Dairy Queen? Um, love my DQ is a uh, very uh, unique hashtag that they came up with. So you can use it in a lot of different ways. You can use it um, as a branding effort, which is what Dairy Queen did here. And what I've shown you here on this side, these, this is actually just, if you go to Twitter and you search with the hashtag, LoveMyDQ, this is just five conversations that had happened in the last 10 minutes. You know? and, and so basically people are able to find that conversation. Um, if you're not using a particular one, this is where I was telling you that the Google Plus is the most powerful uh, social network that uses, or the most powerful use of um, hashtags on social networking. Um, you can actually explore a hashtag. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, and here, for example, on uh, LinkedIn, if you go and you search for hashtag social media marketing, 
you'll find that you have a, an entire uh, number of conversations and people that come up. On Facebook, you can actually search, uh, again, the topic of a particular hashtag. So to answer your question, it depends on what the use is. So are they not registered or owned by Oh, anybody? no, no. Good question, yeah. No, um, unlike website URLs and things like that, they're not registered or owned. But you would want to do research before you said uh, that you were going to use one for branding purposes to make sure that nobody else is using it. But you want to use the tags that everybody else is using so that people can find the conversation and you can actually join in on that conversation. So it's sort of taking a conversation that used to happen between the two of us and now it's you know public and available to anybody so that anybody can hop in. I only have a tablet, an Apple tablet. Yeah. Can I use a hashtag? And if so, yeah. how? Where do I begin? Um, so a favorite topic of yours is? Well, it would be tennis. OK. So um, if we go on the internet and we go to Google, um, I would type in um, love tennis, love playing tennis. You know, just sort of think about what words you would use to describe that. Okay. Um, and then, essentially, you would go into each of the social networks and type in, with the pound sign in front of it, love playing tennis, tennis in Florida, um, tennis every day. I don't know what the, what the hashtags are, but the okay. point being that you would start to get a, a sense of how people are talking about it the words they're using to talk about it, and then you would just go into each of the social networks and use the hashtag search, or their search button, and, and search for that hashtag. Okay. It's from Google. I start with Google. The reason I'm saying start with Google, okay. and Google is not the only search engine, okay. um, but that is the main search engine. Um, I would recommend being whatever you want to use, but the point being, if you go there, you're going to you see the suggestions when you start typing. I see. You know what I mean? Yes. And it drops yes. down? Yes. That's kind of how you figure out what, what the words are that people are using. Okay. Yeah. All right. But we can talk later and, and give you more information. I'll look at it with you. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? Okay. Um, let's see. I just want to make sure there wasn't anything here. All right. And um, one of the things that we really um, have been talking a lot about today is obviously content curation, content production, content marketing, you might hear other people talk about it that way. Um, but in 2014, if you are on the internet, you are going to be sharing content. Don't try and get around it, but you might as well share stuff that's really visual, authentic, relevant, and helpful to other people. Um, it's kind of like going back and saying, um, when we used to, clip out an article in a newspaper that was, or a magazine that was really helpful or that made us think of somebody else because that person loves tennis. And there was an article about you know tennis playing in, in the newspaper in Washington and your friend mailed it to you. That is the same kind of concept that you want to think about when you're trying to find good content to share. You want to find things that are going to be helpful, relevant, and informative to your audience. And the more that you find that, the more that you share really helpful and relevant content, the more you're actually going to get uh, recognition. It goes back to the first thing. You're going to become an authority and a resource on your subject. So keep sharing. For example, LinkedIn, you'll probably log in and see that they're actually inviting you to publish on LinkedIn. Why is that? Because LinkedIn is becoming more of a social network um, and taking on the characteristics of Facebook and Google Plus and so on so that it can really compete with them. So I would really recommend to definitely spend time producing great and relevant content for your audience to share and link to. That's the other real key part of that so that they can link back to it. Um, so we talked about producing content. Um, so you take the time to produce something. Um, is it just dead after you do it and it's just one thing? I love the word repurpose and I say to repurpose this content shamelessly. 
For example, I created a podcast series with a client of mine. The recording then took on 18 different life forms. How did that happen? We wrote a press release about the podcast. We wrote a blog article about the podcast, included a uh, link to be able to listen to the whole thing. The, um, we posted it on each of the social networks. But basically, the point is that one piece of content then can have a tip sheet pulled out of it. You always want to think about how many different ways you can use one thing. A lot of people um, don't really see it that way, but I can actually show you that there are 18 different ways to take one piece of content and reshare it and repurpose it. And it's on my website, I will show you. But um, let's keep going. How do you find all this content? Are you guys familiar with Google Alerts? Yes. Anybody? Yeah. Google Alerts are awesome. It's a really, really neat way to um, wade through the internet and uh, find, again, the conversations that you're looking for. Um, if you go to google.com backslash alerts, you can actually set yourself uh, up with as many alerts as you possibly want to. I would try and stick to no more than 100. That's a lot. Um, but the point being that this will help you actually get information that's being published on the internet elsewhere, and you get notification in your inbox instead of your having to go out and find it. You can use things like Feedly. Uh, Pocket is a new, um, new platform, or new product, I guess, um, that I am in love with. Uh, when you're out on the internet and you're reading all these different articles and you find 18 that you really like, you can't go and share 18 articles that day on your platforms, on your social media channels, because that would be a lot of talk coming from one person. You know what I mean? If you had a friend who was uh, talking to you and all they had to do was share a bunch of stuff, you would stop listening and you would tune out. So one of the things about social media that you really have to think about is setting up an editorial calendar, for example, um, or using some of these scheduling tools that are out there. Has anybody heard of Hootsuite, for example? No? Um, does anybody uh, use the scheduling function on Facebook? These all um, make it a lot simpler so that you can actually send out information on a um, scheduled way. Um, you can also, in order to find content to curate, you can subscribe to industry blogs and experts. That's kind of like the newsletter that we were talking about a little while ago um, that you would subscribe to. Um, obviously, we talked a little bit about following thought leaders on LinkedIn. Go onto the different uh, social networks, get involved with the people that you think have relevant and important information to share, reshare their information. Again, you would use that mention function, but basically resharing a lot of different information. Same thing, follow people on Twitter and, or you know, use the search by hashtag. A um, lot of time and energy is spent making connections, but I think a lot of the, uh, the aspect that is lacking is nurturing those connections. So how do you do that with social media? Um, on LinkedIn, if you're familiar with the uh, endorsements feature, does everybody have skills put into their LinkedIn profiles? If you don't, oh, yeah. that's a big um, opportunity for improvement. Um, making sure that you're getting and giving those recommendations because people do things for other people when they feel like they're getting something out of it too. Um, you also want to give and get recommendations on LinkedIn. You, uh, you endorse them, right? You get endorsements. Mm -hmm. If you have your skills in your LinkedIn profile, you get endorsements for particular skills and so then that increases your authority and relevance. Did you have a question? Um, if your LinkedIn profile, again, is not complete, that's an opportunity to add your past jobs or your schools, um, and that will actually open up a gigantic number of connections that uh, you may not have actually taken advantage of, that point, of at that point, and could increase your network by a lot, exponentially. Um, 
Make sure that you go through each channel and look at the suggestions of where they suggest that you could connect. There are algorithms and things working in the back end of all of these channels that connect us to each other somehow, and they can see that, wade through it, and help you see who you might want to connect to. Good, good, good place to start. Has anybody heard of a lion? Anybody know it? Yeah? Uh huh. Getting there. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. It's on LinkedIn. Um, what it's called is actually a LinkedIn Open Networker, is what it stands for. Um, and that means that you're accepting connections from basically as many people as you can um, that are relevant. You, of course, don't want to get into spam. That's not the point. But as many people as you can so that you're opening up that network and, again, um, putting yourself in a position to become that authority and the resource. Um, one of the things I like to do uh, is provide access to myself without any barriers. So there's no um, expense or anything like that. I have a social media weekly chat. And basically, um, we get together once a week online on the different channels. And um, I answer people's questions. And that's, uh, again, something to consider when you're marketing yourself. Get out there and answer people's questions. Make sure you're being human when responding to comments. Um, if you're on Facebook, make sure that you're looking at the insights uh, to help you understand when to post. Uh, you can optimize the, uh, the time and day of your posting to make sure that more people are listening. Um, and then, making sure that you're taking those offline connections online. When you meet somebody, instead of just putting that business card in a Rolodex, go to LinkedIn, look them up, stay connected. Why? Because if you um, have relevant information to share, they might actually be interested in what you're having to say, or you might have another opportunity to get in front of that person. But definitely take those offline connections online. Can I ask you? Sure. Facebook, how, do, how can you postpone the time of a posting? So are we looking at a profile or a page? page. Okay, on a page, um, if you're on the admin panel and you click on edit settings, you can actually click on uh, activity log. You can see anything that you have scheduled already. If you haven't actually scheduled anything and you're creating a new post, the very bottom left-hand corner of the, of the box, there's a little world or a time. Click on that, and then it will actually allow you to schedule. It's a very powerful tool. It used to be um, unavailable until about three months ago. So, Does Facebook charge for insights? No. Mm -mm. No, they don't. And they are incredibly robust. Um, there is a lot of information there that you can really dig into um, to get a lot, of, uh, a lot more return on your investment for anything that you're doing on Facebook. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, all right. So basically, the sky is the limit. Once people are listening, that's the key. You got to get people to listen first. That's why we talked all about hashtags, making sure that you are setting yourself up as an authority, um, being relevant. All of those things will set you up for success and allow you to actually start promoting and selling on social media so that people can get into contests, live events, webinars, ebooks. Greatness takes time, so don't think that all of this is going to happen overnight. I think a lot of people go out there and expect to buy, you know, 10,000 Twitter followers or 1,000 fans on Facebook. I highly discourage you from doing that. The worst practice that you can get into you want people who are actually there because they want to be there, and you want them to engage. If they're not engaging, if you have a thousand fans and you have two of them who are engaging, your page is not being successful. If you have a hundred fans and two of them are engaging, you're a lot more successful than the person with a thousand fans. So keep that in mind. Um, and other than that, I'd like to open it up for a couple of questions. I know we answered a lot of questions throughout, so please let me know what I can answer now. Uh -huh. 
Um, well, that's the thing is that everybody is now their own publisher. Um, that's what social media has enabled is basically the ability for anybody to be a publisher. Um, he was probably using hashtags. Um, people know how to find the conversation around certain things. Uh, the media is definitely listening to a lot of the Twitter accounts for celebrities and, and people in that, that kind of uh, respect. But the media, unlike what they used to do, um, really utilizes Twitter as a way to find the stories because what tends to happen is that stories break on Twitter an hour, two hours before the media gets it. And now the media is going back to Twitter to get it because, you know, we're out and about and we become reporters when we're out and, you know, you start videoing something or taking a picture. That's where that, that news breaks. And you can actually see um, trending topics on any of these networks, um, on any of the social media networks, and you can see what people are talking about. And that's what the media has sort of got their finger on the pulse of that, too. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank yeah. You. Is there any way you can measure the reach and the effectiveness? You spend a lot of time doing these things. Yeah. yeah. And of course, yeah. uh, if yeah. it's a business situation, you want it to generate dollars. Yeah. That's a measurement. But I want to be real clear that it's never going to measure, or that it's very, very infrequently going to say, this interaction equals this many dollars. Not going to happen. Because again, we said it takes seven times for somebody to be exposed to your brand, product, or service before they actually buy. Um, so measuring it is absolutely possible um, in terms of getting the analytics and seeing the insights. All of these channels actually have um, much more robust analytics and information like available Google to analytics. them. Hmm? Like Google Analytics? Or? Um, you can connect all of your social media channels into Google Analytics so that you know um, the traffic that's coming from the social networks onto your site. So that's very powerful in it and of itself. That wasn't possible less than a year ago. Yeah, um, but for in instance, on Facebook itself, the uh, uh, insights that I was just mentioning a moment ago are unbelievably robust. I mean, down to uh, you know the best time of day to post, and it, it uh, historically tracks everything that you have uh, done, and it really, really does help you understand. It's not necessarily to get the value out of it, but it's to understand if it's working. And the point being, then you connect it to Google Analytics and you see that people are actually coming from those social channels. But again, it's about engaging people, not just the number of followers, not uh, the number of posts that you put. You want to make relevant um, content. Go ahead. Is that your website up there? Yep. Flutterbymedia? Flutterbysocialmedia.com. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, that's one of the reasons why Obama won. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He he figured it out. Repeat the question, please. Um, a lot of politicians are using social media in their in their campaigns. I mean, it's it's. Uh, yeah, it, because they're creating that, that two-way conversation directly with the voter. You see what I'm saying? So the voter feels like they're actually able to talk to the, the candidate, and although that may or may not be true, depending on who's managing their account. Go ahead. Do you, do you, do you represent some candidates? I don't get into politics. <laughs> not girl. <laughs> No, I, I don't. My, my, uh, my clients in general are, are small businesses because I really find that the power of social media brings a small business owner to um, on, onto equal level playing ground as Pepsi, Coke, and all the other gigantic uh, marketing uh, machines that are out there. So, yeah, my, I, I concentrate really on the small businesses. What do you do to actually help your customer? How do you really work? Um, a lot of different things. It depends. Um, I, in general, help people get their social media channels set up, optimized, branded properly. And then um, I focus on training people how to use them so that they can actually uh, get out there and do it. If they can't, then we take it on and we, we manage it the, ourselves for them. We help them with creating editorial calendars, you know, different things like that so that they can get out there. All right, I think I'm out, guys. <laughs> we have to answer any other questions. Thank you so much.